Alright, so today we did a Magic of Giving project thing for a high school group. Was it the, what is FF, is it FFA? Was no, it, it wasn't FFA. It, it wasn't? Was a class that they teach Oh, just a class care. that they teach animal care. And they all came and saw Wes do some animal magic and then he talked about animals and show business. And all the misconceptions. There's a lot of misconceptions. But anyway, did you have fun? Did you enjoy yourself? Fun. I ran out of time. I had so much to tell them. Yeah. I ran out of time. Yeah. So I talked about working in working in television and having animals and having, you know, if you have exotic animals, USDA can show up 24 yeah. hours a day, seven days a week, just like a health inspector at a restaurant. We yep. talked about, um, I, I showed them animal magic. We talked about the history of magic and why magicians use bunny rabbits and birds in their show. And yeah. Old street magicians of the past producing hundreds of eggs. Siegfried and Roy. We talked about Siegfried and Roy, that whole incident and the misconceptions there. Yeah. yeah. And now we're packing up, getting everything set to leave. That was it. Kids and animals. Right, boys? Kids and animals, two hardest things to work with in show business. <laughs> Is that funny, Willow? <laughs> Hey, kid, you're getting awfully close to the edge there. <laughs> Uncle Da! It sounded like you said, Uncle Da! <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, my. Kids, animals, and preteen girls. The three hardest things to work with in show business. No kidding. <laughs> preteen girls are the hardest. Hey. <laughs> no. No. She's, she's a teenager. You're a preteen. I love you. She doesn't look like one. I love you. Technically. You gotta use the word technically. Technically, what'd she say? I am an adult. Oh, yes. Yeah. Technically. Technically. <laughs> Technicality, see what I mean? Yeah. Well Do you guys watch 
magic on television? Anyone out here? Have you guys ever heard of the television show The Carbon Arrow Effect? It's on True TV Wednesday night, 10 o'clock. I was hired to work on that show as a USD certified animal trainer and a magic consultant. You won't see me on the show. You see my shoulder in one scene, but I really had to point out to my mom. Anyway, one day after filming like a 16-hour workday, the production company took the whole cast and crew out to dinner, and it was just really bad timing. Right when my food came in over my right shoulder, I was telling my friend to the left, I said, the only thing I can smell in this restaurant is a rat. And the waitress said, excuse me? I said, no, ma'am, sorry. I'm the animal trainer for the show. Today was a rat day. We had used something on set called a Dumbo rat. Have you guys ever heard of that? Jumbo, Dumbo rat. You guys heard of that? Yeah? So uh, a Disney cartoon Dumbo has big ears. Everybody knows that. But a Dumbo rat is just huge. It took both my hands to hold it, the tails wrapping around Michael's wrist and all the way down to his elbow. Those things are huge. Um, of course, I washed my hands before dinner. I think the smell was in my nose. That's all I was saying. And that lady made the same expression as that lady. She was like, ugh. I said, well, every day is different. One day we had a capuchin monkey on set, a sugar glider, a macaw. The craziest day of all, I got to work with a white Siberian tiger, and I got to teach him a magic trick. And the lady's like, this is a magic television show. Do you guys have any regular animals in the show, like bunny rabbits and birds? I said, in my show, I have doves and rabbits in every show I do. She said, you're a magician? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, OK, magic boy, make a bird appear. God, I was in the restaurant. My food was in front of me. I couldn't do anything. So I had an operation. I put a pocket in my hand. If I go like this, do you guys see it open? Yeah. You do? That's good eyesight. You can see that? Over here, guys, anything? This one's loaded. Bird out of thin air. Watch. Come on, baby. Come on. Well, come on, honey. Come on. Honey, come on. Come on. It's not a bird. I'm working on it. Watch, watch. I'll take all this silk. I'll go like this. How about that? Ta -da! No, there's his wings. There's his belly. Come on, guys. I was at a restaurant. That's pretty good, right? Lana can make a dove appear. That's my wife, Natalie, my little girl, Lana. Guys, give a round of applause. I wasn't alone working behind the scenes. They actually hired my wife and daughter to come along as well. They called us Team Isley on set. One day, we had 50 kittens on set. We only had five on film. They took care of all the others. And another day, we were doing a Wizard of Oz sketch. They hired 12 Toto dolls. We only needed one. They took care of all the others. But now, you can make a dove appear. I can't wait to see this. Lana's dub, I let Lana do magic with it. But here's the thing, you won't see me in that show, just my shoulder in one scene, but you will see my little girl in the episode with a kitten, and that's my little girl, Lana. Good job. Good job. All right, so I'm just showing you guys highlights from my show that's got some animal magic in it. But um, seriously, guys, um, this today is like a volunteer type gig. I do something called the Magic of Giving Project, where I give back in a magical way. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. It's actually our, our nonprofit charity that we run. It's a 501c3. Uh, one episode, we made a car appear for a lady in need. She was 28 years old. She had two heart transplants. We made her reappear. Gave a car to her that she got to keep forever. Um, we've done all kinds of stuff. We've given out food. We've given out money. We've given out lottery tickets. We just try to give back in a magical way. But today, I'm here talking to you guys about being an animal trainer in show business. But even today, as a volunteer gig, I'm living my childhood dream. When I was seven years old, I only wanted to do magic for a living, and thank you guys for having me out here today because I get to live my childhood dream. But there's one thing that drives me crazy. We perform as a family, 400 shows a year. We have an RV, we travel around the country. One thing drives me crazy. I'm living my childhood dream, but one thing just nips up my heels. Do you guys have any idea what that could be? Gas prices. Gas prices. I'm a magician, but I can't fix that, man. There's nothing I can do. Somebody at the show the other day yelled out, you're on the road with your wife all day. That would drive me crazy. I love my wife. It's got nothing to do with that. Anybody else have any other guesses? It does have something to do with my wife, though. My wife makes me pack my lunch each and every day. These are leftover lunch bags from earlier. Um, right here, the blonde hair. What, what is your name? Yeah, you have Blake Cross. What? Madison, stay where you are, Madison. You're going to be my helper for this trip, okay? We're going to use one of these bags for magic and get rid of one. I'm going to let you choose it, okay? She made little egg sandwiches for breakfast. These are our leftover lunch bags for breakfast. Do me a favor, Alice, I just want you to point to a lunch bag. Just point to a lunch bag. Keep your hand right there. Can you guys tell what bag she's pointing to? The problem with pointing, if she moves like this or like this, it could be the other bag. If you want this one, I want you to point over here. If you want this one, point. This is the one you want, so this one we'll get rid of. Is that okay? This one? 
drawing. This one will do some magic with. Watch. Come on, baby. Come on. Broadway guys, good choice, Madison. Everybody give Madison a round of applause. Madison, come on up. I need your help. Madison, come on up. If you guys find me on Instagram or Facebook, you can see a video of my magic room. I live near Richmond, Virginia now, and I have a magic room in my house. It's like 30 by 30. It's the biggest room in my house. I don't live in a mansion. Come right over here, Madison. But if you guys find me on Instagram or Facebook, it's just Wes Isley. You can find me, uh, Wes underscore Isley on Instagram. Um, I do a video tour of my magic room. You have a hair in your lip, baby. There you go. So here's the thing. In that magic room, I have a bookshelf with over 5,000 magic books, antique magic props. But the coolest thing about that room, one of the bookshelves pushes through and opens up to another room. I have like a Scooby-Doo room in my house. I'm a big kid, right? So I was in there practicing a couple days ago, and my bird, she flew off the bookshelf, grabbed a playing card, flew back, and went like this. <laughs> she was laughing at me right Yeah, is that bird? Yeah, they make a little laugh sound. And um, I put her back on the bookshelf, shuffled the card back in, and she did it again and again, and she kept going for the same card. I think it's her way of saying she was out for the card trick. Will you help me help the bird with the card trick? Check this out. It's Madison, right? Yes. Watch. Over here, we have an old beat up deck of cards because I let the bird play with it. They're all mixed up. Is that fair? I'm going to mix these up. You just uh, tell me when to stop. Further that way, further that way, or stop right there. You said this way. I don't know what that means. This way. So I need to come back and then do this. Right there. Right there. Take out that card. Show that card to the audience. Doesn't matter if I see it, it's not that kind of trick. You guys got it? Can you guys see that card? Here, Madison. Here. It doesn't matter if I see it, it's not that kind of trick. It's the two of hearts. Two hearts? You guys got it? I'm going to show the bird, Madison. Hold on. Honey, this time you want for the two of hearts, okay? Honey, the two of hearts? Now, I have to show both sides of right? Hey, she give a bad eye. How would I know? Here, ready? Watch. You take that card, put it in the pack wherever you want. Perfect. All right, Barbara, listen. Show them how you do it, okay? Do it. You can do it. You can do it. Your job, very important. You say, Broadway, get the card. I need you to say it really loud. She's old. She might be hard to hear it, too. Ready? One, two, three. Broadway, get the card. Hey, don't play around. Stop. Stop. She's in there going, Stop. Just get the card. You're acting weird. Early morning shows are rough. Go, go ahead. Ready? Broadway, get the card. Oh, wait, there's a card sticking up. There's a card sticking up. No. no. Broadway, it's a two of hearts, honey. That's a king of clubs. Come on, stop. Stop. You're acting weird. Stop. Just get it. You can do it. Last time, last time, I promise. Broadway, get the card. All right, come here, come here. If you're going to help with the trick, you got to get it right every time. You're acting weird this morning. What are you doing? <laughs> That had to hurt. That's a big egg. No wonder she was acting weird. Hey, up, up. Do you hear something in there? Yeah, you said you'd be acting weird too. Yeah, you had to get rid of that thing. Hand me the shells. Just the shells. Open that up. Show everybody. Could it be? Would it be? To our hearts, guys. Broadway, everybody. Woo! Madison, you're awesome. I'm going to give her some love. I'll take the card. Perfect. Madison, guys. Good job, Madison. And usually at this part of the show, I put her away, but I'm just going to have her hang out just for you guys. Um, there's, because we're all done. There's just one more thing I have to show these guys. Yeah? Um, Lana, we can clean, clean that up later, okay? This isn't a regular show. This isn't a regular show. At this part of the show, I usually introduce my daughter, and she cleans it up. But today's show, Lana, because we had a lot to do, we're just going to close everything out. So is Willow ready? All right, Lana, you don't have a microphone, so say it really loud. Use magic fingers. You got it? Ready? Keep your eye on the bird, guys. Ready? One, two, three. Good job. All right, baby, ready? Set, set. Good job, good job. This girl's name is Butterscotch. Butterscotch is only a year old. You hold up Butterscotch. And if we're going to do a family vow, we got to do it right. Two years ago, we had identical twins. Come on, buddy. Come on, man.
hang out with the babysitter. Don't touch my magic. Don't touch my stuff. I'm going to play a little video, guys, and we're going to pause it. I'll answer some questions and tell you all about magic and all kinds of stuff. I used to breed bunnies when I was little, but I didn't even remember it until my mom showed me that picture. I thought the first time I owned a bunny rabbit when I was like 16, when I thought that I had to have bunny rabbits and birds in my show to be a good magician. Um, I used to wear a tuxedo in my show too, because in all the books you had to have a tuxedo if you wanted to be a good magician, right? Um, Natalie, I'm gonna need you to hit this, because there's a video, but there's also different slides. Um, I've always had a cat and a dog growing up, and if one of them died, they were immediately replaced, right? I mean, you have those loved ones in the family. If it dies, you just feel like there's a loss in the house. You come home, there's no barking, there's no love, there's no jumping into your arms and hugging you. Um, always had animals in my house. When I was a teen, I got a bunny to use in magic shows, and soon after, uh, doves, and I started breeding bunnies, but maybe one every couple of years, one breeding session every couple of years. It wasn't anything crazy. I wasn't doing like a like a puppy mill type thing. It was just for me that I would have, I had some cages and if I had, I was down to one bunny, I'd breed some, I'd give some to friends, other magicians. And um, they're fun, they're adorable to play with when they're little. Um, I have a video later on of us on a talk show with some bunnies and the bunnies' eyes aren't even open yet. Their eyes don't open until like day 12 or 14. Um, I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, but now I have a dog, 18 chickens, a rooster, three Peking ducks, an Indian runner, 13 doves, and three bunnies. You can let the video just play through the next couple clips here, uh, just some pictures here. Um, I've also had pets in the past, like a turtle, several iguanas. One of my iguanas got up to uh, five feet long, and I had a pot belly pig. There's my little girl, and there's my ducks taking a bath, hanging out, enjoying some sun. That's me giving, at the time, all of my doves a shower. I gave them a treat yesterday and they were all gathered around. It was something special. There was some mealworms and everything. You can push pause, Natalie. Um, so a little bit of history about animals and show business. Uh, magic, like you guys know it, didn't exist in 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s is when it started to get inside buildings. Uh, magicians used to just go to marketplaces and just bust or, you know, put their hat down and do some magic tricks, right? And there was a lot of other shady stuff going on. Like, we work as a team. I would do cups and balls, and I would do some magic tricks where my wife picked pockets because it was easier just to take people's wallets than it was to uh, get tips sometimes or to get people to give you donations. So magic had a shady history. But when a magician made a dove appear or made a bunny appear, whoa, that stopped traffic. You can make livestock appear. That would feed my family. And that, that gave them tips. That It just became awesome. Um, another really cool thing back then is, um, uh, I'm trying to skim around here. Bunnies and doves are mostly quiet, so when you put them in a load chamber, they don't make any sounds. You might hear my dove sing uh, later on if we had the other cage back out, if he was in that cage for a long period of time. You would hear him, they don't do that when they're sad. They don't do that when they're scared. When they're scared, they hunker down and they don't want any predators seeing them. These are uh, the bottom feeders, guys. Doves you see at the bottom of bird cages, at the bottom of bird, what is it called, Natalie? You put the bird seat outside, help me out. Oh, bird feeders. Bird feeder, thanks. Doves you'll see at the bottom of that, they'll pick through other birds' poop because <laughs> they have to swallow their food whole. You have to give them gravel and grit. They digest it in their belly. They can't peck at you, they can't hurt you. This is their only weapon, guys. Watch this, this is their weapon. If they get mad and they start fighting, this is what they do. That's all they can do. Um, so, being bottom feeders, yeah, you got it, buddy, you got it. Leo, you got it, man, you got it. He's patting the guy behind him. So, um, this, they get attacked by everything. So imagine snakes, they're bottom feeders. Snakes get them, um, and that's their main thing. In the wild, they live about three to four years. In captivity, this guy's 18, but 25 years in captivity. Um, so uh, they were quiet in low chambers, and back then people were amazed. Um, but if they didn't make any magic, if they didn't make any money, if the magician didn't make any money, if they didn't have a partner that could pick pockets, and they didn't get any money that week, and it's getting cold, and I need to eat, I'm, I didn't make any money, this town was just dry. They can cook them up and eat them. If you're thinking 1700s, you just go to the next town and just grab a, grab a pigeon, grab a dove, and you have your, your partner back, right? That's just the way it was back then. Bunnies, you can eat them. 
right? And that was what the attraction was when you produced them. Because people are like, wow, that's food for my family. You can make food up here for my family? Wow. So um, that's, that's why they used bunny rabbits and doves in the 1800s. Houdini, famous Houdini, the amazing Houdini. Times are different, guys. He was the star of show business. But early in his career, after his show, he sold toothpaste. They did whatever they could to make a buck. The show was free, but afterwards they sold toothpaste just to get some extra money. Um, let's see, let's see. So that, that fact about them being edible, that's not cool, but that's just how it was. Another popular effect was producing a chick, uh, but you would constantly have, um, have to keep hatching them because a chick gets a couple days old, it doesn't fit in a low chamber anymore, so you can't, that's a lot of work. It was a very popular, very famous trick, but it's a lot of work. Another thing that was very popular in the 17, 1800s was showing a bag empty and producing seemingly hundreds of eggs. It might be 20, 30, 50 eggs out of an empty bag. That's an amazing trick. Once again, you can feed my family. But that magician, the eggs go bad, you have to go town to town. And they were real eggs, they could crack them open. But um, this is a picture of a guy from 1849 and you see him showing off his magic prowess because he has flowers in his show. So it's gonna be a pretty scenery that he can do and he can make tons of doves appear. Go ahead and hit the next slide, Natalie. You can just let it run, I think. I'll tell you when to cut it off. This is a woodcut of Isaac Folks. This is 1726. You see that he produced, oh, I went too quick. Natalie, rewind it, rewind it. You saw that he was famous for um, producing hundreds of eggs out of that bag. Perfect, right there, just hit pause. 1726, guys, he can produce doves, he can produce eggs, and you see come some kind of squirrel creature at the bottom. Who knows what he was using, just whatever, but he made live animals appear. And you see one of the birds has a card in its talons, so maybe he did a trick like I did with Broadway. We'll never know. Go hit the next slide and just pause it, because I thought it was enough time, but I guess not. All right, this guy right here, Heller's Wonders. I have no idea who Heller is. He's not a famous magician in magic history. He has a poster, his stuff lasted, but I've never heard of the guy. But you see um, in the bottom, the bottom left, he's doing something called a spirit cabinet. The middle is an amazing trick called, bottom middle is an amazing trick called the, uh, the baker, where you um, put playing cards inside this dollhouse and this baker would come to life, the doll would come to life and give you whatever card you chose. If you chose a cookie, he would bake you a cookie. Um, but the bottom right, he had a, a, a pan that looked like it was like on fire, like they would build it on a fire pit and he would produce some ducks and doves and all kinds of stuff. So that was always on their bill. They were always producing animals. Go ahead and hit the next one, Nat. That might be it for that. One more, I know. Yeah, right here, push pause. This is our television show. We have a television show in syndication across the country. It's called Wes Isley's Magic Life. It follows my family around doing 400 shows a year. Usually that picture on the, on the left, if you look up here on this banner, it has that dove on my shoulder. It's Broadway on my shoulder. Um, we took a couple pictures, one with, with the dove, one without the dove. That one happens to not have the dove. But you see me feeding the tiger over there. People are infatuated with animals. They love it. Um, the problem with animals in show business is one bad apple spoils the bunch. Uh, there are people who use animals in their show and don't take care of them. And, uh, but there are bad people everywhere. There are bad parents. There's bad teachers. You name the job, there's somebody that's bad at it. 